The fight is done. We lost. Oh my gosh, a female lead in a Star Wars movie. And then the, the trailer for Rogue One comes out, and it's another female lead. Oh my gosh, how unfair. We've had probably like two million straight film cinematic roles where men have been leads, and now we've done two in a row that are women. I can't wait to see what people are going <laughs> to... Some audience members have issues with the show's diversity and LGBTQ plus themes, and those should be dismissed. However, viewers should genuinely examine the legitimate criticisms the acolyte has received. Cultural critics like the critical drinker and nerd Roddick have dubbed the show lore-breaking for its recent revelations, but their commentary isn't productive. Rather, it encourages bigotry and hatred over a show that's just getting started. If you, if you love Star Wars and you want to see it thrive, Star Wars is about hope, and it's made for kids. Kids who, just like you and just like me, watched Star Wars at some point when we were little itty-bitty things, when we were Padawan age, and turned on Star Wars, our jaws dropped, and our eyes popped out of our skull, and we fell in love with this galaxy far, far away. Maybe there's a kid out there who's doing... Actually, I'm, I'm certain there's a kid out there who's falling in love in Star Wars that exact same way because of the Acolyte. Mates, I am not gonna lie. I honestly even tried to do some research going into this, but I just decided that I'll leave it up to the comment section. And man, do I feel like it is in my nature to build up a certain amount of hype for what some, mostly me, would consider an inspirational feat, not only for Leslie Headland, Star Wars, or Disney as a whole, but as a monumental step forward for all creatives and their ideas going forward. Because we, as a collective audience, have just been blessed with the pleasure of being invited to front row seats to witness and digest what was, and more than likely is, the most highly marketed, lowly anticipated, most expensive, predictively divisive, and most importantly, glorified fanfiction that just eventually ends up becoming around four and a half hours of a series that is trying its best to mask its smell as shit on a screen. Because unfortunately, no matter how you look at it, The Acolyte was a show written by people that are in way over their heads when it comes to this IP, spearheaded by a showrunner that can't tell her own head from her ass, crafting and creating a show that is riddled with terrible pacing issues, character introductions that go nowhere with no impact on the story, lazy character conveniences that replace the writing tactic of cause and effect, protagonists that emote so terribly that you would think that Gail Godot was Meryl fucking Streep, a cheeky fight episode in order to edge and give ammo to the forever dwindling fan base of Disney superfans, exploring a world so small and lifeless that we have just succumbed to instant transmission, and the worst part of it all, especially as an audience member, ideas that aren't actually bad if you really squint hard at them, and ideas if handled by someone who had an IQ higher than your average garden tomato, a show where you can actually see a vision that isn't as bleak as the one we were just handed. But that is what happens when you give a bloke $180 million to create fan fiction for an IP that she feels like she can cherry pick elements that are necessary for her slice of the cake without looking at the dessert in its entirety. And honestly, that's the main umbrella problem that Disney has been facing since the purchase of this brand. Disney Star Wars as a whole simply doesn't know what they're doing. They don't have qualified people to write these scripts. They don't hire qualified people enough to write engaging or unique characters. They don't hire qualified enough people to entrust this brand to and to respect the groundwork that came before. They don't hire anyone that helps contribute to the cause or narrative that Star Wars or the people involved is a brand that cares about its audience. And when you don't care about your audience, and for lack of better words, alienate and divide your audience for years on end, this is the cake that we as a studio to audience relationship is left with. And again, it's unfortunate because with a show like The Acolyte, it kind of gives off the impression that Disney Star Wars isn't really in the game of reshaping their image. It's more of a stand on business mentality. But when that mentality is leading to a decline in business and the further alienation of the fans, then when does it end? The next Disney Star Wars project isn't slated until 2026 with their movie centered around the Mandalorian and his green puppet. But that is 2026. That is an insanely long time to go on a hiatus after leaving this poor of a taste in the audience's mouth, let alone having this sort of a track record to back up the negative backlash. It's not a good look, and it's not the type of sunken place that I ever would have thought this franchise would currently be in. And honestly, it makes me pretty sick to my stomach. So with that, let's hop into it, shall we? <laughs> 
don't worry, you don't have to skip ahead or change the video or anything like that. Trust me, I know our attention spans and I share no delight in giving this brief recap. So we're going to make this quick and to the point. Oh, usually I don't do spoilers, but I mean, come on now. The Acolyte follows twin girls who are somehow twins as adults and not kids, Osha and Mei, two girls born from the force of their witch's coven who for the most part live pretty content lives. But on the night of their ascension, whatever the fuck that means, the twins find themselves being forced down different paths after a chance meeting with Jedi Master Soul, a Padawan-less master who somehow senses Osha should be the Padawan that he's been searching for. But after a string of miscommunications gone wrong, and for lack of any better way to explain it, characters making choices so brain dead that only a human that fails the Are You a Robot CAPTCHA would make, a fight ensues leading to the apparent obliteration of the Witch's Coven, the death of Mei, and some heavy hearts from our Jedi. Poor guys. But not all is what it seems when a rogue shinobi trained in the Jedi arts begins to hunt down, attack, and finish off the job for some of the Jedi that were there that fateful night. The twins find themselves intertwined yet again as the show attempts to wow the audience with writing strategies and narrative norms such as comical plot twists, dynamic Toontown character development, underwhelming emotional stakes, underdeveloped tension, an incoherent vision of cause and effect in regards to our characters and the plot, and generally creating one of the most incoherent and laughable plots that you could ever imagine spending five years crafting the idea, two years molding the idea, and $180 million to fund your idea. It's aneurysm inducing to say the least. And yeah, while it was relatively obvious that there was bound to be some criticism of this show, even before it started to air given the current climate that we live in, and the quote unquote culture wars Disney seems to be raising with anyone that has a beating pulse, a battle that Disney, Bob, and Kathleen seem to be willing to fall in combat for. And no, it's not like the show itself really lends its supporters any favors. And yeah, it's their own fault and people like Kathleen have paved their own path of dumbassery when it comes to this IP. So I don't have to reiterate all of the terrible choices that she has made for this brand. But it's kind of a scenario where it feels not only insulting to Star Wars fans as a whole, but simply to the senses of any audience member that consumes media. But I have to talk about the elephant in the room, or at least my elephant in the room when it comes to this series, this brand, and all of the franchises under Disney, because I have honestly never seen a marketing strategy such as Disney Plus's when it comes to how they must feel about how their audiences ingest media, because it is a strategy that is mainly exclusive to their platform for episodes to range in between the 25 to 35 minute marks, literally your average Saturday morning cartoon. And I think that kind of ties into it all, because while the MCU, Star Wars, or even a franchise like Doctor Who are franchises that you could argue from a Disney employee's POV that are made and marketed towards kids, it's almost mandatory that a shorter runtime is needed for the TikTok brain new generation. But this is too far. Yes, while this show and this brand has been riddled with many, many other decisions that has led to this franchise's destruction and all-time high fan apathy, the runtime of these shows that I'm not quite sure if they even want us to take them seriously or not, have to have longer runtimes. Even just this year, when you look across the board, it shows like Fallout, House of the Dragon, The Boys, Shogun, Invincible, and those are just shows that I have seen. I couldn't imagine cutting half of that content because it was necessary for the story to be a complete vision. But all of that reasoning does is just really hammer home the fact that we have really been asked to ingest as an audience is unqualified, unorganized, half-assed, and an incomplete vision of a person that either lacks the creativity, imagination, or IQ to finish the job. In a way, what I'm saying is that there is no way that Disney Plus shows could release with a runtime that most shows would call the norm because the people that are hired there simply lack the talent to do so. It's a skill issue. It all just circles back to the fact of my own personal mindset when it comes to all of Hollywood of execution over idea. Really think about that for a moment. As much of a great idea that you might have, if you give a half-assed effort, or even if the effort isn't half-assed, just simply the end product isn't all that in a bag of chips, then what could you realistically expect from the audience to keep bird boxing themselves until their own mentality, standards, and expectations drop low and become as tuned town as their Hollywood supply, which in my eyes is not the way to go about your audience to studio relationship. 
and why I continue to reiterate that Disney Star Wars is by far the biggest brand in the deepest of sunken places, even when compared to other top dogs such as the MCU or even the DCU. And the fact that the Acolyte has become the lowest rated Star Wars project of all time really signifies that issue. So on a ranking tier list that is still a name in progress, for a show I feel like I could easily move up if based on the idea over how the idea was actually executed, I simply cannot. So unfortunately, because I am someone of integrity and craft, pretty much making me an international hero, The Acolyte Season 1 is shit on a screen. And unfortunately, a show that I think has anchored this franchise so deep in the sunken place to a point where I genuinely believe it might be unrecoverable. And when you think about it, the only people that are really affected by this course of action are actually the beloved fans of this franchise. Fuck me. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. And if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I'll leave a link to my Twitter and letterbox in the description just in case you guys want to go check that out. Again, thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that is all the words I got for you today. Bye.